Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to the channel. This is your personal psychedelic neuroscientist, Manesh Gurn here, back at you with another video. In case you're new to the channel, I'm your tour guide into the complex and fascinating world of psychedelic research. Today's topic, psychedelics versus antidepressants. This video is gonna cover everything you need to know about the differences between psilocybin, the compound in magic mushrooms, AKA shrooms, and similar psychedelics and antidepressants. We're gonna explore the different ways that antidepressants and psychedelics affect the brain and how they each differently lead to reductions in depression symptoms. And we'll also dive into what you need to know if you're someone taking antidepressants and are considering going on a psilocybin mushroom journey. But remember, this is not medical advice and please consult with your physician before considering doing any of what we discuss in this video. Before we jump in, I wanna briefly mention the sponsor of today's video, Psydelve. Psydelves are digital collectibles that let users create their own custom trips and give access to a suite of utilities for people interested in psychedelic. Go check out their website, psydelve.com to learn more. Big thanks to Psydelve for sponsoring this video. All right, so let's start by describing some of the most common antidepressants. There are a few types that are commonly prescribed and not just for depression, but also for conditions such as anxiety or PTSD. Why that's the case will make sense as we go through this video. Two of the most common types of antidepressants are SSRIs, which are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, and SNRIs, which are serotonin and norepinephrine reuptake inhibitors. Three of the most commonly prescribed SSRIs in terms of their marketed names are Lexapro, Prozac, and Zola. Whereas the three most common commonly prescribed SNRIs are Effexor, Cymbalta, and Pristique. Maybe you've come across these brand names or have had them prescribed, but what do they actually do? Well, the common theme across all these drugs is that they increase the levels of certain neurotransmitters in your brain. SSRIs increase serotonin and SNRIs increase both serotonin and another neurotransmitter called norepinephrine. Basically, these drugs work to modulate the balance of these neurotransmitters in order to artificially change your mood and make you less depressed or anxious. While these drugs definitely have their place for particular people at particular points in time, they definitely have some serious limitations and side effects. Some common side effects include an overall emotional numbness reduced sex drive, increased acne, and increased weight gain. And this effect of feeling emotionally numb, where you no longer experience strong emotional highs or lows, actually follows directly from how these drugs work. In essence, standard antidepressants work to modulate your neurotransmitter levels to reduce the intensity of your emotions. This might have the desired effect of reducing negative emotions, anxiety, and depressive thoughts, but at the cost of also reducing the amount of pleasure and excitement you experience in your life. And I wanna highlight here that the idea that serotonin is this happiness molecule is simply not true and no researcher would ever make that claim. In the context of antidepressants, serotonin's primary role is chilling you out a little bit and reducing your emotional range to help you cope with difficult emotions. And this leads right into another core fact about standard antidepressants. They're just sweeping your symptoms under the rug and not addressing their underlying causes. Unless medications like these are combined with some form of therapy or self-development work, antidepressants won't do anything to help you heal, thrive, and grow as a person. They're they're just helping you cope and manage your symptoms. Again, this can be really valuable for some people for certain periods of time, but there are no means an ideal long-term solution and should not be viewed as such as far as I'm concerned. Now that we know the main ways that antidepressants work, let's see how distinct they are from how psychedelics are used therapeutically. First off, rather than sweeping symptoms under the rug, psychedelics affect the brain in a way that induces powerful alterations to consciousness that can be a source of personal insight, emotional release, and the processing of traumatic and repressed memory. Psychedelic therapy is fundamentally a curative approach that is aimed at finding the autobiographical material in your psyche it needs to be processed, integrated, and released in order for you to grow and heal as a person. In this sense, it aims to cut off the symptoms at their roots. The mechanism of how psychedelics work does not involve directly increasing serotonin or norepinephrine levels in your brain like a typical antidepressant. They don't modulate your neurochemistry behind the scenes to make you feel better. They predominantly work by inducing profound and transformative experiences such as emotional breakthroughs and mystical experiences. Another major difference of psychedelics relative to antidepressants is that psychedelics don't do the work for you. In order to get better in a lasting way, it requires conscious and deliberate work on your end to integrate your psychedelic experiences and make the real changes in your life. Psychedelics are not magic pills. Integrating your psychedelic journey is just as important as the experience itself. And for some science-based tips on how you can best integrate your psychedelic journey, make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay tuned for future videos. 
To date, only one clinical trial has been published that directly compared psilocybin or any psychedelic to an SSRI. The SSRI in this study was escitalopram, aka Lexapro. This study compared two doses of psilocybin given three weeks apart to six weeks of daily escitalopram. Interestingly, at the six week point, both medications reduced depression symptoms to a similar extent, but psilocybin performed significantly better on most of the secondary measures, including well-being, ability to feel pleasure, ability to accept and feel one's emotions, reduce suicidality, and ability to function socially and at work. This study highlighted that psilocybin works in a fundamentally different way than escitalopram and may be superior to standard antidepressants in general when taking a holistic view. All right, now that we have a better sense of how antidepressants work relative to psychedelics, let's just summarize the key difference between SSRIs and psilocybin to make all of this very clear. So first, psychedelic therapy is based on a limited number of dosing sessions. Studies have found reductions in depression that last up to a year or longer in some patients after only two or three sessions with psilocybin. In contrast, you have to take SSRIs every day and become dependent on them in order to experience lasting reduction in your symptoms. Also, psychedelic therapy typically does not lead to any chronic side effects. The main side effects you might experience are temporary feelings of fear and anxiety during the trip and a headache and fatigue the day afterwards. In contrast, SSRIs come with a variety of side effects that you experience every day since you have to take them every day. Another core difference is that psychedelics can potently reduce symptoms within 24 hours, whereas it usually takes four to six weeks for standard antidepressants to fully kick in. Next, whereas SSRIs chronically numb our emotions, psychedelics do not. Data from the escitalopram versus psilocybin study actually supported this and found that escitalopram reduces brain responses to emotional images, while psilocybin showed no change or even a slight increase. Other studies have also found that psilocybin might reduce fear and negative emotional responses while preserving positive emotional responses. In fact, fully experiencing and engaging with your emotions is a core part of psychedelic therapy. Also, interestingly, the escitalopram versus psilocybin study also found that psilocybin reduced rumination and the suppression or avoidance of negative thoughts, whereas escitalopram didn't. This further underscores the different mechanisms through which they lead to antidepressant effects and long-term outcomes. And as I mentioned, this same study found that escitalopram and psilocybin both reduced depression to a similar degree after six weeks, but psilocybin uniquely improved patients' well-being, enjoyment of life, ability to function at work, and ability to be social, whereas escitalopram did not. Lastly, as I've mentioned, psychedelics help us tackle the individual specific root causes of mental health conditions to promote true healing, growth, and personal transformation. In contrast, SSRIs just artificially reduce their symptoms to help us cope with life. Now, there's one last thing I want to touch on, and that's whether someone taking an SSRI can safely take a psychedelic. Well, several early studies found that SSRIs reduce the effects of psychedelics, such as LSD and psilocybin. And this makes sense because SSRIs increase serotonin levels, and when serotonin levels are high on a consistent basis, the brain will respond by reducing the number of serotonin receptors to balance things out and maintain homeostasis. This means with chronic SSRI use, there'll be less of the serotonin 2A receptor, which is a receptor that mediate psychedelic effect. If you're interested in learning how exactly this receptor works and why it's important, I've covered it extensively in two of my previous videos that are linked down below in the description. But despite it making conceptual sense that there would be less of a psychedelic effect with chronic SSRI use, two recent studies have actually called this into question. One study with healthy subjects found that taking an SSRI for two weeks prior to a psilocybin experience did not reduce the positive and consciousness altering effects of psilocybin, such as ego dissolution, mystical states, and visual imagery. But it did reduce experiences of fear and anxiety. So this suggests that taking SSRIs with psilocybin might actually ease the journey and not reduce it. However, a core limitation of the study is that subjects were healthy, not suffering from depression, and they only used the SSRI for two weeks. So it's unclear whether this would apply to people who have been using SSRIs for months or years. Another study looked at the effect of psilocybin therapy on depressed patients who had been using SSRIs for an average of 14 months for their depression. And this study similarly found that patients still experienced a full psychedelic journey and that psilocybin therapy was just as effective and safe for them as for individuals who aren't on SSRIs. In general then, there's nothing that suggests that taking psilocybin with SSRIs is dangerous. No, it doesn't say anything necessarily about SNRIs or other types of antidepressants. But worst case, SSRIs will reduce your experience a little bit. And I also want to emphasize that this 
instance with psilocybin, things might also be different with LSD, and they're definitely different with ayahuasca. With ayahuasca, if you're taking an SSRI or any other antidepressant, you should not take it. This is because ayahuasca contains something called monoamine oxidase inhibitor, or MAOI. What MAOIs do is they reduce the ability for our brains and stomachs to break down and recycle certain compounds, including serotonin, as well as DMT. MAOIs combined with SSRIs have the potential to lead to serotonin syndrome, which you definitely don't want. And I'll be covering that more in a future video because it's a pretty important topic. All right, I hope you found this video to be helpful and informative. And if you did, I'd appreciate it if you could share it with other people who might also find this information valuable. If you haven't already, make sure to hit that subscribe button smash the like button and ring the notification bell to stay tuned for future videos. Also, feel free to drop a comment down below with any questions, comments, or feedback, and I'll do my best to get back to you in a timely manner. So again, this is your personal psychedelic neuroscientist, Manesh Kern, signing off. Until next time.